Hey, Pete here for Studio Live today, and in this GarageBand for iPhone quick tip, we're going to be looking at one of the coolest new features of version 2.1 of GarageBand here on the iPhone, and that is the drummer instrument. So if you've ever tried to add drums to a project in GarageBand, you'll know that it can be a bit of a frustrating and fiddly experience. So if you are playing the actual drum kit using the standard drums instrument, it can be quite hard to coordinate and get your, your rhythm and your beats in, in right, and there's a lot of editing involved. Uh, if you're using the smart drums, you have a lot more flexibility and you can create some patterns, but you don't have quite the control that, that uh, you'd like and, and uh, it can again be a little bit fiddly to do that editing. And if you're using drum loops, well then you have very little flexibility. Whilst it's very easy to edit some drum loops, once they're in, there's nowhere to go. You can't edit and change those. So today we're going to be using the drummer inst instrument within a project and show you how to use that and get started with drummer. So we'll go back. What we've got here is a project that it has uh, two guitar tracks here, uh, two guitars, a bass, and an electric piano, and at the moment it has no drums, so it sounds a little bit, we'll just get to the bit with the guitars, like this. So a pretty standard sort of rock uh, riff with a bass two guitars and there's a little bit of an electric piano bit that comes in at some stage. So what we want to do is actually add drums using Drummer to this track. To do that, we hit on the plus to add our new track and we'll select the Drummer instrument. So what GarageBand will do is it will instantly populate our entire song. So this song is uh, 64 bars and it's populated the entire song with, um, with drums. Um, and it's it's chosen which drummer we're going to use, it's chosen the beat that it thinks is going to work, and it, it's set that up all the way through. Um, and each of these sections, um, if we tap through, we can see all of the settings here are exactly the same. So this is our baseline setting for, for what's, been, uh, what's been added using Drummer. So the first thing that we can decide on is, if we don't like the drummer, we can actually replace him. So the GarageBand has chosen Kyle for this particular song. We can go in and choose a different drummer. So if we tap on Kyle, we can scroll through, and we've got Logan, uh, we've got Magnus, we've got Leah. Um, and what you'll notice is that some of the drummers have a little real drum icon up there, whereas others will have a little drum machine icon. So that's basically the types of drums that they'll be playing. Um, so if you've got a rock song like this, you want a real drummer like uh, Logan here. And if you've got a, an EDM or a, a dance or, or drum and bass type track, you'd want someone that's using a drum machine. So let's go back and, and keep Kyle in there because he's a bit of a modern rock kind of guy. So we'll tap on him to bring him back in. And here's the beat that the, the garage band has thought that Kyle should play for this song. So let's have a listen. So not bad. Does fit the song. Good sort of rhythm. Seems to, to work well. If we're not happy with that, but we sort of like the, the idea of Kyle's drumming, what we can do is jump in here where it says half pipe and we can adjust the preset of this particular part of the track. So if we, for instance, go to Crash the Party and hit Done, and then go back to the start of this, we can see that it's actually adjusted all of these options along the bottom here, um, and particularly it's changed our hi-hat to the toms, it's adjusted the volumes and complexity, and it's changed the number of fills, etc. So let's hear what that sounds like. So that's very cool, um, sounds good, uh, and kind of works for the start of this song. So we're going to leave that in there for now. Now what you'll notice is when we tap the next section now though, it's gone back to that default. So if you do want, if you do make a change there and you want to copy it to the next one, you just need to copy and paste that over. So let's do that now. We'll hit copy, so we'll tap it and hit copy, we'll tap on this next section, we'll tap again and we'll hit paste. Oop. It's nearly worked. There we go. We'll try that one more time. So we'll tap on there, we'll tap on the section, and we'll hit paste. We'll try that one more time. Tap on there, bring it to the start, and then tap and hit paste. So a little bit fiddly, 
Sorry about that, real world problems here. Um, so you can see there that we've now got the first two sections and they're both the crash of the party. And when we go to the third section here, um, it's now the half pipe. So I've done that deliberately because that's kind of a transition point around that particular bar, which is around uh, bar 16 of this song. So let's just play this little section and we'll hear it going from the previous one, which is this crash the party into the half pipe. So there you go, you can see and well, you can hear that um, the, the actual sound has changed, it's, it's a different feel to the beat, um, and it means that when you're transitioning from your verse to your chorus, you can change the beat quite easily. Um, so if you wanted to change each one of these, you just need to tap and uh, adjust each one of those independently. You can, of course, um, change the length of each of these sections. You can change the looping. You can copy and paste them multiple times. Um, but that's a little bit advanced for this quick tip. We'll go into that in more detail in another video. I wanted to show you the other options we have down here, though, because there's some cool things that we can do if we're not 100% happy with the drum beat that we've got. So the first option here is this slider, which you can see goes from the bottom corner, which is where we have the soft and simple in terms of the volume and the complexity. And then if we slide it to the top corner, we've got loud and complex. So we'll leave it on loud just so that you can hear it. But if we go over to simple, it'll sound like this. hear there that when we slid it across from simple to complex, it obviously became more complex and, and uh, had more sort of beats and a different sort of rhythm. Um, the other options we have over here, so we can actually change whether we're using the toms, the hi-hat or the cymbals um, with the actual beat. So we'll just show you that really quickly. It's on toms at the moment, which you've heard. If we just tap on the hi-hat over here, if we miss it, there we go, um, and we'll play that same beat again. So it sounds similar, but instead of having those tom hits, it has hi-hat, and then if we go cymbals, so it's now using our ride cymbals as opposed to the hi-hat. The fills option here, we can control whether it has virtually no fills, which is just a very standard beat, or whether we have a lot of fills. So it's basically playing a variety and variations on the beat uh, a lot more frequently. So let's hear what it sounds like with a lot of fills. So you can hear there that it varies up the beat a lot, whereas if we go all the way down here and we play it with playing a very standard beat over and over again. Uh, there's a couple more options that we have here. Um, we can add percussion in. So we've got the option, we'll put these back to Tom so we might be able to hear the percussion a bit better. So we can have a cymbal. So you can hear the cymbal hit on the, the, the two and the four beat. We can have a shaker. And you can hear a very uh, quiet shaker in the background there on the two and four beat. And then we can have a hand clap. So we're through to our next section. So you notice there that because it's gone to the next section, those edits have been uh, not undone, but they're no longer there. So if we go back to this section, there's our edits. There's one more thing that's a very cool feature with drummer, and that's the ability to follow one of your instruments. So if we select the follow down here, we can actually select one of our existing tracks and instruments to follow, which means that the drummer will listen to the beats being played by that instrument and it will follow along. So in this case, let's select bass and hit done. And then if we go back to the start and listen to this, So the, the drums will actually follow the instrument and, and that's really good if you want to sync up a, a bass part with a drum part. And it works especially well with virtual instruments because it can actually see the, the beats, it can see the MIDI uh, items for the notes and it can match the beats to those notes. So it sounds especially cool if you're using, a, uh, this is a real bass, but if you're using one of the virtual instruments uh, for the bass. 
Um, so that's Drummer, and it's a very cool way to add a drum track to your song. Um, and uh, I highly recommend playing around with it. It's got a lot of features, um, and it's a very cool way to add some easy and flexible drums to your next GarageBand track. <laughs> 